Hello again, St. Lucia, and welcome to the program, Agriculture on the Move. My name is Philip Sidney, your host. The Ministry of Agriculture considers this year to be a productive year for agriculture. It's the year of production. And included in that program is mushroom production. Mushroom has been imported over the years in St. Lucia, and we need to at least reduce the importation by increasing local production. The Ministry of Agriculture, in conjunction with the Taiwanese Technical Mission, have agreed to assist in the production of mushroom heads in Lucia. You'll hear more of this. I have three gentlemen in here who have decided to form themselves and a grouping called the Mushroom Collective. And here with me to my immediate right is Mr. Jid Hutchinson, who's the president. Next to him is Mr. Eugene Gabriel, who's the PRO. And of course, next to Mr. Gabriel is Mr. Alexis M William, who is a technical coordinator for that a group called the Mushroom Collective. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. Thank you. Great. Mr. Hutchinson, as president, um, we want to know why this group was formed. Give us a background, the objective of that. So thank you for being on the show. We can to really understand the purpose of the organization, we really need to understand the market or the industry behind mushrooms. Definitely. In St. Lucia currently, we import about $1.3 million worth of mushrooms annually. That was during its peak time. It went down during COVID, but mm -hmm. at peak we were going about 1.3. But that is more of the fresh and chilled mushroom um, imports. But that's only on the spectrum of opportunity with mushrooms. That's only a small, small part of it. You can do fresh mushrooms, you can do chilled mushrooms, um, mushroom products like dried mushrooms, um, even powdered. And you can go as far as doing things like packaging, leather, and electronics mm -hmm. from mushrooms. So understanding that great opportunity, not only to increase production of mushrooms locally, to substitute imports, we, often, we understand that there are other job opportunities with that. And speaking to a couple of people, and if Alexis and the rest of the team, we understood that we can help in, in, increase the number of producers on island by off offering the training because of the technical expertise of Alexis, and also create new avenues for young people to find job opportunities. Mm -hmm. So the Mushroom Collective is here to not only support its members, it supports, the, it supports its members, it supports new job creation, but also looks into R&D and new ways of new opportunities for the use of mushrooms within St. Lucia. When was this um, organization organized? This was done about two years ago. It took us a little while to get the whole organization structured, but about two years ago we finally officially became the collective. How many members? Currently, we have about 30 members internally, but we've also been working with the ladies from the Fair Women's Bloom project, about 25 ladies there, and a couple other young people, which we'll, find, which we'll hear more about later, mm -hmm. but these are also interested in joining the collective. Okay, great. Okay, um, Mr. Gabriel, as PRO, of course, and the support you give to that group, and of course, the other groups that are on board, tell us about the two uh, other groups that are, I know there are women on board, where we wear women bloom. I was, I was also told there's also boys to men. So tell us about those two. Okay, okay so the women's that bloom project that we did in conjunction with the Taiwanese embassy, they, these women were taught and well, to train to, to grow mushrooms. We understand that right now in the world, they focus on growing women in agriculture. So that's where I, the name Women That Bloom came about. So in mushroom production, we try to get them to basically work for themselves be self-sustainable. Like you, like you clearly said, this is a year of agriculture for the Ministry of Agriculture in St. Lucia. So once we couldn't actually start to train these women to increase production in mushroom production, they now could say, okay, hey, even the, the, the fellow farmer could say, okay, hey, we, we, we're part of a mushroom collective. 
you're not working, why not try to try something new instead of trying to farm and it's more difficult for you. You might be handicapped. It's easier for you to grow mushrooms in that sense. The Boys to Men project, it could be underprivileged boys like we did at Safa, Boys Training Center, and Care. Again, not, every, not everybody could read and write, but there are a lot of kids right now that, that have more practical, and growing machines will actually help you stay away from the guns because you actually have something to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, first, you actually own your own business mm -hmm. as a machine producer. Definitely. Because Alexis, I know you've been involved in machine production over the years. In fact, you're a pioneer. Um, this is a brief background about yourself and where you're at with yours, and then we'll come to the collective. Okay. My name is Alexis. Um, I'm the owner of Funky Fungi. Um, I started my business not too long ago, about 12 years in the making. Um, basically, we produce a lot of the oyster that grow in St. Richard, Platas Oyster Rest family. Um, and we sell it out basically to the hotels, the restaurants, the locals, and the demand has been overwhelming over the few years. Um, but yeah. So, what, what were your challenges? Um, most of the challenges we faced were like basic materials, raw materials. So, I came up with an idea and a strategy to maybe alleviate that. Um, I went into basically formulating a few of them, putting a few things together so they can actually get, w get me the result I was looking for in the end, mm -hmm. and it worked out to the best. Yeah. So what sort of support do you give to the collective? Um, well, I am the technical coordinator for the collective, also for my own business. So uh, my um, contribution towards the collective is basically training and facilitating of the training of the different members and the different groups that we engage on a day-to-day -day basis. I noticed some time ago there, there was a, a, a sort of a uh, training on your, on, on your farm, right? Yes. Um, tell, tell us about that. Um, it was basically a practical training to facilitate the guys in terms of hand, hand, hands-on field in growing the mushroom, a step-by-step -step process of the production cycle in terms of the substrate, the production of the substrate, um, the different attributes when it comes to the growing room, the spawn room, and also a small lab, which, which helps and facilitate the, the growing of the whole mushroom process. Okay. Um, going back to the uh, establishment of the, the two groups, are they island-wide or they, or they specific to a, a location? You're talking about the two the groups? Two, yes. The two, The um, Wear Women's Bloom Project. Mm -hmm. and, and the Voice to <coughs> The Wear Women's Bloom Project, we selected people from around the country, mm -hmm. um, from Viewfort, Ancillary, so all around. Mm -hmm. um, they were selected, they all had to submit a reason, a short video, mm -hmm. with a reason for them to want to be growers. And between the Ministry of Agriculture, the Taiwanese, ECA, and ourselves, we were able to select 25 women who showed very strong interest in production. So where are you at now with them? <coughs> so currently, or just before we carry on, if, mm -hmm. the, if the young men, mm -hmm. um, we're looking again across the country. The first cohort were 25 who were in the north. Mm -hmm. The second cohort will, will have more from around the country, from the rest of the country. Okay. Currently, the women, we, they're now in the capacity building stage. So we've done the training. We've provided them with grow rooms and grow bags to start the, to start the production process. And Alex is going to attest to it how mushrooms may seem very simple to grow, but the process and the maintenance needs to be very meticulous on how you go about doing that. So at this stage, the ladies are just going through that process and learning how to deal with all these challenges going on. Mm -hmm. And that will help them as they start to increase capacity and they start to build that business out. Okay. So Mr. Gabriel, the question of establishing a grow room, um, and is it costly, you have a cost of production, and all material, everything, um, in, for, st for somebody starting, especially with the women, and uh, the two groups, would, were they given seed money to start? Well, they were not given seed money, but they were given, I'll call it seed material. Mm -hmm. So as part of the collective, we built the, the structure and provided the, the grow bags and the material needed like the, the water in cans, the, the pins to actually clean the mushroom bag, bleach bottles, you know, to, to make sure everything is sanitary. So they have literally a business was given to them mm -hmm. after we did the entire training. Entire training. Yeah. So, so, mov so moving forward uh, in terms of continuity, are you all going to be working with them, hold their hands for to take them from point A to point B? Yes, yes, yes we will. I mean, like, like anything else, you would not just drop mm -hmm. them to their own devices because they're new to mushroom production. 
So it's a continuous thing, maybe uh, bi-monthly or, or how we can to actually, if they have a problem, they reach out to us. Because again, Alex is the, t is the technical person on our team. Mm -hmm. So now he would go on and see what is the issue. They would speak to him and then we'd go out and, and see how we could help any issues that they have. So how, how have they embraced the program? They've embraced the, the, the program really well. And from those programs that we're actually doing, we actually getting so many calls from overseas to actually do replicate it. Replicate mm. it. Like I just came from St. Vincent and the Ministry of St. Vincent of Agriculture actually want to replicate this there. December, same thing in Antigua. We're getting calls from Trinidad, St. Kitts, Dominica, Grenada. So we already see how big this is going to be. And again, like you said, the year of production mm -hmm. is not just for us. It's Caribbean-wise. Mm -hmm. Because remember, we now, as a Caribbean, are trying to increase food production within our agriculture sector. Mm -hmm. So in terms of marketing, uh, where, well, you're, you're the main man, because mm -hmm. you know, I know you're, you're a vigorous marketing person, because you and your, your wife, <laughs> over the years, I mean, I've seen you all, you know, very, very vigorous. Tell us about marketing. Well, on the marketing aspect, in terms of the consumer, it is very good. Um, the turnover and I find the overall response when it comes to getting the product from the farm to the customer is overall welcoming. Um, in terms of the marketing, you know already, mo most of it is like word of mouth. We go from one person to the next person to the next person. Mm -hmm. And over the years, it's been the trend. Um, I would say in terms of market-wise, we normally focus on the, like, the, the local for now. And then, then we branch it out into the hotels and then to the restaurants. Mm -hmm. But the biggest consumer of our whole, when it comes to production, production of the mushroom, goes to directly to our locals. But you're free, free to, to cross talk, eh, to if okay. you yeah. interject. Yeah. Um, because I want to find out, for example, um, whether you have the, what's imported. Is it preferred or, it, or the local one is preferred? Because the local one is fresh. I mean, what you have well, in, in, in from, from my experience, I find the, re the overall response when it comes to the local mushroom, the freshly grown local mushroom, mm -hmm. it's better compared to, uh, and I normally get in a, in a regular that it is much better than in adverse to what they get on the shelf. When you, when you eat an imported mushroom, it's like cardboard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got, it's like cardboard. Yeah, when you eat a really fresh mushroom, yeah. it's like yeah. you're eating real something, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're eating something yeah. different. Yeah, you get all yeah. the flavor, yeah. you get all yeah. the nutrients, yeah. you get it flavor. basically table fresh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you basically get it table What sort of percentage you all see you all have on the market in the right now? In the market in Russia right now, mm -hmm. okay, I mean, Alexis is probably the, currently the, probably the bigger grower mm -hmm. in terms yeah, of local production. But in terms of our capacity going forward, we do we're on the, we're looking at about over sixty thousand, about sixty thousand pounds of mushrooms mm -hmm. over three months. So that's about twenty thousand pounds a month. Wow! Yeah, that's with the capacity of the current people we be training mm -hmm. to grow mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So we, that's that's where we that's where we're going. But remember that we're not all going to fresh mushrooms mm -hmm. because all the variety of products that they could create, mm -hmm. tinctures, dried mushrooms, supplements, etc. Mm -hmm. So we understand that. Although we import a hundred million dollars, I mean, sorry, million dollars worth of mushrooms, mm -hmm. that's only the first side, and there's a lot more that could be going. Great, great, great. Yeah. Okay, we'll continue with that. We we'll do for a break. Mm -hmm. You are watching Agriculture on the Move. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon. Happy forty-five. Uncle Lobo wants you a committee de poda. Bagay la show. Minisa we call ni seafood festival. Sakai bad. Ça c'est liché douette. 20 février, Fichus Complex. Sans souci. Un casse Happy Independence. Ça a caille chaud. Il caille chaud. Tout bagaille la mer bouillot. Ça a caille chaud. Il caille chaud. Tout from bagaille la mer bouillot. This one is hot. There will be lots of food in the pot. Lots of food booths available. National entertainment. Independence Seafood Festival. La Kaini Papa Veda. Afa Ale. Wule Tete. Addition. Avot service. Engosian team. Vision Band. And lots more. Ay, Kaibon. Yelele. Ikaibon. Uma Kaila. Ikaibon. Poison Free. Ikaibon. Lobby Woody. Ikaibon. Kids all available. Big Mama's buying full blast. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. Of course, we're talking about mushroom production here in St. Lucia. Um, I know right now it's fresh mushrooms that you're delivering um, on island. 
but I know there are a number of byproducts. Okay, can, can any of you take on that? Tell us exactly where we would you want to go the, the, the next step. Well, for me in personal, well, in, in personally, is towards we stay in our ship towards um, our value added, um, mm -hmm. like our tinctures, um, our hot flavored, um, garlic flavored, like those are just a few um, of the byproducts that are coming out of Funky Fun, like hopefully soon. Um, we're already into the process of testing it out. We are giving a few samples out to chefs, um, locals, restaurants, just to be able to get a general feedback. We're testing the time stamp, the date, the length of time, how long it takes before it. No, it, it basically runs its course. And so far, so good. The, the result we're getting back is A1. A, um, it's basically met with basically a good, it's a good, a good feeling. A good Another feeling. thing I'm thinking that you all can do is to have maybe a mushroom festival. You know, and come out with a number of those those products. Other products, you don't know. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, we plan to, we plan to, we plan to, yeah, we plan to, we plan to. Because again, we, 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 our whole goal is a circular economy. Mm -hmm. Like, like Mitch has said, it's not just growing the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. The byproduct is needed, and again, we, our whole goal is to reduce waste. Mm -hmm. Again, the Mushroom Collective again has collaborated with my company, which is Ian Yarrow Chemicals, mm -hmm. where we in the process of creating a fertilizer from it. And okay. then from after that now, the, the rest of the ways to actually create a container to actually grow the mushroom itself. Mm. You understand? Okay. So these are things that we're looking into as part of our R&D mm -hmm. to see exactly how we could innovate and keep that circular economy going and keep using just basically environmental free products and material. Are you looking at, for example, at, uh, uh, um, compost material too? Yes, yes. we are. Yes. So I mean, just to add that out, I mean, as you should mention, one of the things from the from the waste product we're looking at is the bio is the bio fertilizers, mm -hmm. the compost, the compost tea. So Alexis is currently doing a, pro a project right now at the Vumi compost and how we could create Vumi compost from that. Mm -hmm. you, uh, Eugene worked on the compost tea and also the um, compost from that. But beyond these ready-made or I should say solutions that we can think of generally. One thing that really interests me, and that's one of the reasons why I, from, from my personal interest, mm -hmm. but also looking at certain, some more of the R&D side from the collective, mm -hmm. things like leather. You could, do, you, do, you could do leather from mushrooms, vegan leather. That will look at, that will be interesting fabrics to the, to the mix. Mm -hmm. And also things like um, electronics, because mushrooms, the mycelium does react to the environment. Yeah. Yeah. So therefore you could use that as, uh, on, to create um, sensors and circuits circuit boards. So from the collective standpoint, we also want to start looking at some of these R&D opportunities mm -hmm. and look for funding partners to be able to support these R&D opportunities. Mm -hmm. I mean, you never know, maybe sometime you'll hear about mushrooms in space and the collective will be doing some <laughs> research on production of mushrooms in space because mushrooms are, they have a very high um, protein content okay. and they're, and they uh, they may not be a full meal, but they can actually be part of a full a meal. Uh, yeah. And looking at what we could do with food and how our reliance on food, but also looking at reducing and working on the 25 by 25 yeah. opportunities that we have, mushrooms could play a big role within that. Yeah. Yes, In fact, yes. we're looking at, at our <coughs> food and nutrition security. Yeah. And that's what, again, as part of the package for this year, yeah. we mm -hmm. really want to aim for that. 25 by 25, yeah. you know. In terms of the, um, the continued, uh, you know, getting the information to schools, have you all decided on doing some work in that regard to sensitize the schools? Yes, we, we, we have been speaking a lot about that. Again, as part of the Boys to Men project, I said one of the main sectors was South Louis Community College. Mm -hmm. So we, we started there. Um, later in the year, we will start with the secondary schools mm -hmm. to see how the kids themselves react yeah. to it. Because mm -hmm. when, you, when you tell a, a, a child, you know, t have, a, have a taste of much and they'll watch you like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it's again a sensitization. Yeah. We just have in to fact, put as, it more as mentioned that, I just remember the, the what do you call it, um, um, the myth, in, what do you call it? Um, so, uh, the name they call the the, the pa power soul jab, power soul jab, <laughs> and the, and the negative uh, yeah, 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 to it, yeah. you know, because it's, it's poisonous. Yeah. 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 Have you have you all gotten to that point where people are doubtful? They don't want to go into it, no? Yeah, we are. I, I, I have come across a few people that are they they are being savvy in terms of eating or consuming mushroom, mm -hmm. and I have informed them that it is not like 
the path. We, the information is at the tip of a finger now. You can basically go and download an app and be able to scan or get some mm -hmm. kind of information. Take a photo of the machine and you will see exactly. And then now we provide that, that, like, that gap. We fill in that gap in terms of getting information in terms of is this mushroom poisonous? Is this one poisonous? Can we consume this one? Mm -hmm. And then we we'll basically and can guide you accordingly and tell you, well, not all merchants are edible, but mm -hmm. you support. there are signs and, uh, and, and different attributes you need to look for in terms of not just going out there and foraging mushrooms. And I do encourage people to go out and forage mushrooms to consume mm -hmm. because you need to know exactly what you're doing before right, you right, can right, actually yeah. go out there mm -hmm. and, and consume mushroom. them. Mm -hmm. Looking at your R&D, um, are you all hoping down the road to prepare what you call a tech pack? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So one of, one of the projects we're working on as well is environmental management controls for mushrooms. Yeah. And that will help with, I mean, what we're just working to f um, retrofitting one of the grooms by Funky Fungi to mm -hmm. actually do that, do that analysis, understanding the conditions that it needs to grow and how we can control them. And then taking that and creating this production guide that we could enter into the software that my company mm -hmm. develops so we can now start supporting production beyond just the mentorship and all these things because Alexis is one person so we need to be able to find all the support mechanisms for the right. for our members to be able yeah. to, to, to what sort of varieties you'll have on working with right now um, for now we deliver a lot of collateral oysters or the oyster family and we're looking to go into agricus bisporus for the button mushroom the favorite button mushroom and the portobello mushroom mm -hmm. we also have a few um, um, medical strains like lion's mane, shiitake, noki, mm -hmm. and we tend to want to go down that line because we don't know of the certain of the communicable diseases that are around the place, mm -hmm. and we need to try our best to alleviate that, so we want to go down that line in terms of introducing it, or maybe people can absorb it and put it into their diet and maybe have an alternative change in terms mm -hmm. of the overall health. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking also um, looking at a, a recipe book? Well. A recipe book would be interesting, but I think the person, you know, the best person to do that for us. <laughs> like, I mean, this is our vice president. She's and she's she, around somewhere. She's yes, around, yes, but she's yeah. she's good at cooking. I mean, I've had some of her food, mm -hmm. and I must rich. admit, it's been good. Mm -hmm. She taught me. She told me about this. Um, I should uh, the pink oysters. Mm -hmm. How to deep fry them. Oh, wow. oh man, that tastes <laughs> like fish. It was really nice. Okay. So you I never that realized from mushroom eating. Wow. So yeah. yeah. I'm s I've, seen print, I've seen pretty interesting recipes where they've, s they've shredded them and used them for ch in chicken replacements. Mm -hmm. But also, I think it's the king, the king oyster mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. other varieties, we actually use them to create milk meat alternatives. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. using the mycelium from some of the, I thought, was it the lion's mane where they created um, bacon replacements? Bacon strips. Okay. Yeah. So okay. these are th interesting products that you could create out of that. You never realize this what mushrooms yeah. using until you finish until you eat it. Yeah. Until you yeah. 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 But what do you think is um, at, at the, the way it's used now? I know it's used, it's used in, in, in pizza making and stuff like this, mm -hmm. but to, what, is there any other areas apart from using it fresh at home, like you talk about frying or whatever, the dominant way in Sinusha of, of using you know, mushroom? I've seen, it's funny enough, I was on holiday in Mexico, mm -hmm. and one thing they did, they introduced into the smoothies, mm -hmm. so you could yeah. use the, either the dried mushrooms, and then you, all the powdered ones, mm -hmm. and introduce that into smoothies as supplements. Um, we've seen them- the Because remember, it's a protein. Yeah. Yes. It's a protein sauce. Yeah. seen them use it in oils, um, in soaps, mm -hmm. um, what else? Chocolate. Chocolate. Yeah, chocolates. <laughs> This this, I mean, even the psychedelic ones that they've used in ice cream for all the stuff. Yeah. Yep. And yep. they do have, and again, things like lands me in the line sheets, the psychedelic ones, they do have the medicinal, um, medicinal properties. properties. The medi yes. But yeah. in fact, I'm interested in the medicinal properties. Um, have you gotten any, any feedback from maybe uh, in St. Lucia, right, for um, in, uh, a particular variety that can be used in medicinal use? Yes. Yeah. Um, three in particular. Well, I will say two, the Ling Chi and the Lion's Mane, because mm -hmm. the, the Lion's Mane is responsible, it, it, it means it attribute is to help to repair certain brain cells. Mm -hmm. so, so as you get older, you tend to forget and we tend to go into a state of dementia. Dementia. Yeah. 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 Alzheimer's. Actually have have Alzheimer's. Yeah. That much yeah. you can literally repair the cells within your brain and help you regain your memory. Because so you're sitting on a million dollar thing there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, well, everything yeah, is patient. It's patient. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. You, only, you only need to get, get, get it out there. But first, I think it's, it's a livelihood for the various yep. persons yeah. out there. It is. Um, and you, you all see it happening. I mean, are they selling 
out there, the, 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 the women's bloom and also the boys to men, uh, are they in production? The, well, we, the, for, for, for now, we, we, started up, we, we start them up with a, with a startup kit, mm -hmm. so they can actually get their hands wet. Mm -hmm. So they can actually feel everything that was taught to them during the training, mm -hmm. so they can apply it to that. Mm -hmm. so, so far, the feedback I've, I'm getting from basically all, all, all the leaders that were participating within that training session, mm -hmm. that they, it, it's not like the ordinary, normal day crop. Mm -hmm. They need to actually apply everything they learned yeah. during the training so they can get what what the result the out of what, they, yeah. what we give to them. Mm -hmm. And so far, the feedback I'm getting is A-OK. -okay. And some of them, are, we, we, we generally go to them on a regular basis to just get feedback in terms of how you doing, what's going on, and they would say, Mr. William, you make it look easy on the farm, but it's not, <laughs> it's not easy. I mean, it's not a typical day at, on the farm yeah. work where you have to spend four or five hours, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. you have to dedicate an hour uh -huh. to your mushroom yeah. room yeah. for you to actually I know agriculture is risk and uncertainties. In terms of yeah. pests and diseases, do you have a problem with that? Not to say. Um, most, of, most of the pests and diseases that, uh, that will affect Mushroom, that other mushroom, or other fungi. Mm. So we have green mold, yellow mold, and the list can go. And that can you can control that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 basic yeah. little sanitation of cleanliness. Bleach and certain other little thing, mm -hmm. and you a okay. Mm -hmm. When it comes to like to see other like no, yeah, like the norm in the soil, mm -hmm. we don't have too much of a big okay. problem. Okay, I want to end. Final words from you. Well, I think this whole thing needs to be put into context of the mushroom industry in Saint Lucia mm -hmm. and understand where the collective. Uh, sits and how we see that industry and how we see our impact. Mm -hmm. So one thing we need, we're looking at is uh, we're trying to grow mushrooms in this regenerative process. Right. The idea is to use local materials and we've, um, with, with Alex's work so far and with the help of Ica, start targeting the waste material, whether it be waste banana leaves, waste cardboard boxes, cocoa and co um, coconut and cocoa koi, and use these waste inputs, this become the inputs into the whole production mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. Alexis has now started to do all the spawn locally as well, so we can actually buy the initial spawn and create the, um, our local cultures locally, so then inoculate to go through the process where you then produce mushrooms, have the waste material, use that waste material, which is the spent substrate, back into the process, okay. and therefore closing that loop for zero waste. Currently, we've, I think currently the only area we haven't tackled yet are the plastic bags okay. so that we use. Which is on our list. It's on our list to tackle. Yeah. But also looking to divert waste from the landfills land land mm. because all the, cook, all the wood chippings and everything else that we use, all these become important as part of the substrates mm -hmm. for that. So mm -hmm. as a collective, we're looking at tackling that whole industry, not just production, but looking at what are the other linkages mm -hmm. and how we use these to improve the mushroom sector. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. So you all have a task ahead of you all. Right? Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But we're, we're ready for it. We're ready for it. We're ready for it. We're ready for it. Yeah. So you all are well trained in that regard. Yeah. 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 Well, well we, I think we have, across the team, we have a nice balance of both technical people, people who understand not just mushrooms, but um, the inputs, some of the business side, business areas to it. And then being able to structure the organization in a way that it can do its job very properly, good. but also give support to its members. Mr. Hudson, thank you very much for being here. Mm -hmm. Of course, Mr. Gabriel and Alexis, thank you all. I wish you all success. And I know you all are on the right track. I'm hoping it may be in the next two months to bring you all back here to give us some results. Well, hopefully sure. in the next the two months. for agriculture. Hopefully next two months we'll send all the ladies on the, the ladies, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, 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 I agree, I agree. Thank you again for being here. Sure. You You've been watching Agriculture on the Move. Thank you for viewing the program. And remember, agriculture is our business. And this year is agricultural year. I'm Philip Sidney saying goodbye. And see you again. Thank you, John. Agriculture on the Move. 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 Agriculture on the move.